Hi there YouTubers, Jim from Ohio here and one of the things that I've been wanting to do for a very long time is to get into solar. Um, there are a lot of steps that it takes I found out to get into solar and to do it right. I do see a lot of videos online where people jump in, uh, they add a couple panels to their house, they install a very cheap grid tie inverter and a lot of times they make mistakes along the way. I see a lot of people doing uh, some things that are unsafe. I uh, see some people doing things that are just inefficient and they don't get the payback of solar. So I wanted to try to get into it and uh, line all my ducks up in a row and make sure that I do it right the first time. So I've watched tons and tons of videos. I've read a lot of articles online and in books, watched a lot of home improvement TV shows and I decided that to do it right, um, I had to do what all of the pros are saying to do. And rather than to just jump into solar and go out and buy something and slap it on your house, uh, the first thing you'd need to do for efficiency's sake is to figure out how much energy you're going to need. And even before that, reduce as much of your energy costs as you can up front. So I did a lot of the normal things that's recommended. Uh, we added insulation to our attic. Uh, we added a radiant barrier also into our attic. Uh, we had a new roof installed. We needed a new roof. This isn't anything we did for energy saving purposes, but we needed a new roof so we got it done. Uh, but some of the other things that we did, we had new windows installed. Uh, we went with a higher efficiency window and hopefully that'll help with our heating and cooling bill. Um, we uh, upgraded some of our appliances to include our HVAC system. So we've done a lot of things that were really very expensive, but we have seen our power bill go down. Now right after we saw our power bill go down, uh, we decided to purchase a, an electric vehicle. So we purchased a Chevy Volt. And so while the energy bill went down prior to getting the Chevy Volt, now we saw a slight increase again in it. So we want, we want to do something to offset some of the costs. We know we're not going to be able to replace all of our uh, energy costs with solar and go off grid. So we're going to do what we can to just uh, reduce our footprint on the environment to add some solar and kind of grow into it over time. So uh, over the next several months, uh, we're going to kind of embark on a journey and we'll try to take our YouTube followers along. Uh, some of the things that we're going to do, and I have been acquiring equipment over the time. So uh, one of the things we're going to do, we're going to start where a lot of other people start. We're going to start with a simple grid tie inverter and connect it to a few solar panels. Uh, but we're going to do it a little bit different than how a lot of other people do it. We're going to try to do it safe. I know that uh, there are reasons that, the, that these are not approved in the U.S. Uh, there are none of these that are UL rated. Um, and, and that's because uh, by plugging this into a simple outlet on the wall, you can overload that circuit. A lot of people don't take into account the amount of energy that's running through that circuit that may be in another room or even on another floor of their house. So we are going to install dedicated circuits that we attach something like this through. And we're going to sim uh, simply do testing with this to see how well they perform. Uh, I really don't have a lot of expectations, but if we get a little payback, that's going to be good. Then after that, what we're going to do is kind of graduate from this over to a unit like this, which again is just another version of a grid tie uh, inverter, uh, but this one has a couple extra features on it. Uh, some of the features it has is this has a limiter. Um, it uh, does not feed power back to the grid. It measures the amount of power that's being used in your house and it can, uh, this one is a thousand watt model and it can uh, introduce up to a thousand watts into your local home grid but it doesn't go out to the the national grid or, or the local area grid uh, and, and feed back. Um, there are reasons that I wanted to go with something like this as opposed to the other one uh, mainly, um, while it is a good idea in, in, in the long run, uh, it's a good idea to work with your power company and um, do things right, uh, get permits, 
uh, have electricians uh, come in and install things. Uh, I'm a do-it-yourselfer. I want to do everything I can at a reduced rate. And when I evaluated what it will cost to bring in an electrician, what it's going to cost to bring in inspectors, uh, what it's going to cost to have a plan drawn up, what it's going to cost to pay uh, to feed my power back to the grid. It really wasn't worth it for the amount of money that the grid is going to reimburse me for the power that I put into it. Now I have a very low power rate here in, I live in central Ohio, and I'm paying only about six cents a kilowatt. Uh, that's very, very cheap. Uh, for me to sell that power back to the grid, they're only willing to pay me about a penny a kilowatt. And so it just doesn't make sense to do that. So I'm, like I said, I'm gonna do it yourself or I'm gonna try to do it myself, but I'm gonna do it right. I'm gonna, as I mentioned, I'm gonna install a, a circuit dedicated for the power that, put, that I put back into the grid. I'm gonna keep the uh, limiter function turned on so I never introduce any power back to the grid. And um, uh, after I uh, install something like this, the next step will be to move up to a bigger inverter. Uh, this is a PIP inverter. This is a 24 volt model, and it is uh, also 110. And I hope to actually, instead of replacing the 1000 watt unit, this is a 2000 watt unit, um, or actually 2400 watts, and uh, I hope to install it next and supplement with the 1000 watt. I'll probably have the 1000 watt on one side of my uh, power box and the pit on the other side. Um, the reason that I'm doing it in these phases or these steps is I may make mistakes along the way. And if I do, I'd rather blow up something like this that was a little more than $100 uh, than something like the, the PIP model. So I'm going to kind of do it in stages. Also along the way, uh, I uh, do have some batteries. I was able to pick up some, um, these are uh, lithium iron magnesium phosphate batteries. Uh, these are out of medical cards and they were only a few years old when I got them. They're supposed to have a life of about 10 years these are some of the most valuable batteries on the market and they work excellent with solar. So uh, after I get things wired in, my next step is to um, set up a battery bank and I was able to come across about 20 of these batteries and uh, that should be about 10 kilowatts worth of power that I'll be able to store uh, using a uh, charge controller. So I'll hook this charge controller up to the solar panels, they'll charge the batteries and that way, after the sun goes down, I can still continue to run off of batteries. Uh, or, in the situation of a grid outage, uh, I will have a backup generator using batteries. Um, so that's my plan. Um, I've gotten uh, circuit breakers. As I mentioned, I want to do everything as safely as possible. I'd like to do everything as professional as possible. And uh, so over the next several months, uh, I'll be putting this system together. And um, as I uh, put it together, I'll try to record as much of it as possible. If anybody sees me make in any mistakes or has any suggestions on things that I can do differently, uh, feel free to place a comment down below and I'll be happy to uh, either address that or try to implement it into my plan. Well, thanks for watching and hope you'll tune in for this experience. Bye-bye.